Another recent study shows no association between saturated fat intake and risks of heart disease. When are we gonna start focusing on dietary matrix itself, the, the makeup of the diet more than the individual components? We have more evidence to say now that that is the way we have to go and stop trying to vilify certain food groups. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com. And every time a study like this comes up, I feel we need to shout it from the rooftops because it really does help um, put this in a much better perspective. Rather than saturated fat is bad, polyunsaturated fat is good, you know, replacing saturated fat with carbs or monounsaturated fat is good. Instead, we need to look at what is the whole dietary context and what is the quality of the evidence. So this study published in the Journal of American Heart Association titled Dietary Fatty Acids, Macronutrient Substitutions, Food Sources, and Incidence of Coronary Heart Disease, Findings from the Epic CVD Case Cohort Study Across Nine European Countries. Here's the thing. It's from this huge database of, titled EPIC, the European per Perspective Investigation into Cancer and Nutrition Study, with 385,000 participants across nine countries in Europe. You know, it's a low-level um, data from food frequency questionnaires and tons of potential confounding biases, and again, with razor-thin hazard ratios. So it's low-level, but why am I highlighting a low-level study? Because it shows there's no association between saturated fat and coronary vascular disease or heart disease. And that's important because, well, why would it be the case in this study when other observational studies do show a correlation? And it's got to do with the patient population, it's got to do with the healthy, healthy user bias. So when we look at a lot of the older studies, um, observational studies, there's a clear baseline characteristic differential that those who eat more saturated fat, more red meat, are lower educated, lower income, more likely to smoke, less likely to exercise, more likely to have an array of poor um, health conscious decisions, basically. But interestingly, in this cohort, that was not the case. So let's look at the baseline characteristics. When you compare the lowest quartile to the highest quartile of saturated fatty acid intake, uh, the education level is actually greater in the highest quartile, which is the opposite of what we usually see. The physical activity level is greater in the highest quartile, again, which is usually the opposite of what we see. Now, smoking status is still higher in the highest quartile of saturated fat, which is what we usually see, and a little bit higher percentage of drinkers. But here's another one, body mass index was higher in the lowest group of saturated fat intake compared to the highest with a much higher percentage of obese people. 23% were obese compared to 12% for the lowest and highest intake of saturated fat. And the carbohydrate intake was lower for the higher saturated fat intake, which makes sense uh, to a degree. So 42% versus 50%. So still not low carb by any stretch of the imagination, but lower carb. And as we usually see, the fruit and vegetable intake was significantly lower for those who ate higher saturated fat. So a bit of a mixed bag, right? Still more smokers, lower fruits and vegetable intake, higher energy intake overall. But otherwise, those, those healthy user bias pre-existing findings and the baseline characteristics weren't there. And I think that might have a lot to do with explaining the difference. Also, this was in, in uh, nine different countries in Europe a whole different setup of the way they eat. Their whole food matrix is the, is the term they used in this study. Uh, very different than certainly in the United States and maybe in some other industrialized countries. And when you look at the data, it's basically sort of a straight line in terms of how much fat you ate, how much saturated fats, monounsaturated or polyunsaturated. There wasn't much of a variation at all in terms of more likely or less likely to have heart disease. Now, interestingly, when you break it down by country, France is an outlier because there were only 37 heart disease cases in France, whereas the other countries had, you know, 330, 1100, 892, 1700, 1400. So France just had such a small subset that of, of actual cases that there's really not much of a statistical power for, for France. But when you combine them all together, there's no difference in how much saturated fat, monounsaturated fat, polyunsaturated fat, and your risk of heart disease. 
which clearly shows that the dietary makeup itself is more important than just the individual component of saturated fat. Then they did an analysis for a substitution, right? We, we, we've heard all these studies that if you substitute, substitute saturated fat with polyunsaturated fat, it reduces your risk of heart disease. Well, first, those are statistical manipulations. They're not actual substitutions for the overwhelming majority of those studies. But in this study, again, it showed no difference. If you substitute saturated fats for, um, for polyunsaturated fats, there's no difference in terms of the risk of heart disease. Now, the next thing they did was they broke it down by specific food type rather than just saying saturated fat. And basically, cheese and yogurt showed a benefit. Those who ate more cheese and yogurt had a lower risk of heart disease. Again, doesn't prove that that food itself was protective of heart disease, but those people who tend to eat ate, eat more of those were likely healthier, had you know a healthier food matrix overall. Red meat showed a slight uh, increased risk, but 1.07 was the hazard ratio. It doesn't get much lower than that. And really for an individual, that means next to nothing. You know, for a whole population, it almost means next to nothing at 1.07 when it's such a small difference. Um, and certainly for an individual, it wouldn't mean anything based on the on these data. Vegetable oils not associated with harm or benefit. Butter, no association with harm or benefit. Interesting, margin, margarine, no association with harm or benefit, but... Um, Oh, maybe it's my bias. I certainly wouldn't recommend margarine. And that's that it's basically got to do more with the overall food matrix and the specific makeup of the food components themselves. So um, I'd really like to hear proponents of, you know, saturated fat is evil. We have to reduce saturated fat. Saturated fat causes heart disease. I'd really like to hear their intake um, or their input on this study um, because what it does is it really brings into light how poor the data is um, connecting saturated fat intake to increased heart disease risk. Now, if saturated fat raises LDL significantly and you're in an environment where you're metabolically unhealthy, where maybe LDL has, has a stronger um, impact on your health, okay, then that could be one component of it. But taken as a population as a whole, we didn't see that association in the study. So again, I always bring it back to certainly if you are baseline healthy, following a healthy low carb diet, um, improving your metabolic health, um, then where's the evidence that, that saturated fat intake of any kind is harmful in that situation? And it just doesn't exist. So context, 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 right? So this does not prove cheese and dairy are going to uh, protect you from heart disease risk, but it's also extremely suggestive that they're not going to cause heart disease and neither is increasing your saturated fat intake. Um, especially when you account for the, the baseline changes that you don't see the same unhealthy user bias that you normally see. So anyway, I think this is an important contribution um, to the science and makes a lot of sense. All right. Um, if you like this, please click the thumbs up and subscribe and you'll get all our updates here on Diet Doctor News on YouTube. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.